Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number 8, I believe, of the UBL Season 6, and we're up against Q the Costa Rican, and this is going to be a really intense one. We both have the same record, we both really, really need wins in order to kind of stay in this entire kind of playoff picture, but pretty much every week from now on is going to feel like a must-win match. This is an incredibly scary one. I kind of like the team that I built, but we're going to have to see. I'm going to get right into it. I'm very excited to see what, what's in Team Preview here. We do see the Rillaboom, Noivern, Frostlass, Slowking... Landorus and Tapu Fini. Okay, so right off the bat, that means no no Raikou. No Raikou is really huge to me. No Moltres. Wow, no Moltres is insane to me. No Moltres is insane to me. However, I think from what I'm seeing, I've never seen him bring Frostlass and not lead it. So I'm going to have to assume that he's going to want to lead Frostlass. And my main kind of objective here is I'm probably going to just lead off with my Victini so that I can U-turn out into Zarud to break a Sash. And then from there, Darkest Lariat is reasonably free. Uh, I think that's always going to be the way that I lead this. He, if he gets up spikes, then I'm, I'm confident enough that I can defog them at some point in the match. And anything else going on here? I think Galarian Slowking is going to be a huge, huge issue for my team. But no Moltres frees up my team a whole ton, right? Like, I think not bringing Moltres is very, very huge for kind of what my team wants to do here. It just opens up so much. It even opens up my Rotom because my Rotom had to be here to, to deal with the Moltres. Now my Rotom can kind of deal with more and it opens up just so so much here i'm gonna click done i think I, I think unfortunately if he does lead the the frost last it does mean that i will have to reveal both my scarves in the first two turns of the game which is really not not great but at the same time giving up that information to kind of have what i think are either a part of major multiple spikes or he clicks turn one poltergeist into my zarut coming in which is also fine yeah yeah he does lead off with this thing, I fully, fully expect this thing to want to be uh, Focus Ash. So from here, I can just reveal Scarf, click U-turn, and we can move on from here. As long as, again, I either limit him to only a layer of spikes, or I or I bring in Zerud to, to heat up a Poltergeist. Uh, I'm not even sure what that kind of calc looks like but regardless uh i do about 25 percent as i as uh, the curse body does go off now honestly uh darkest layer into a curse body would be pretty unfortunate but that would have to be two turns in a row and, and it does honestly do a little bit more damage than i would have expected but it goes for a shadow ball turn one so a little bit unexpected here but as far as things go this is pretty much you know fine with me he could no know that i'm scarf turn one and switch out now but again even if he does switch out i think his team doesn't manage darkest lyric terribly well for one and second of all um yeah it does withdraw that's fine but second of all i just don't um goes in a noivern okay okay well i am scarf so he would have to be scarfed as well which is well he's just first my scarf he would have to also be scarfed which is fair it's definitely possible here um and yeah, we unfortunately don't two hit, so I'm gonna have to switch out. I think this makes the most amount of sense to me. I think this makes the most amount of sense to me. I could also just go into the duck here. Let me think. Uh, yeah, I think the duck makes the most. Oh yeah, no, the duck was primarily here for the Raikou. And now that we don't see a, a, a Raikou, I think um this kind of frees up this right here and i do have the ice beam obviously but i, ex I expect him to click u-turn here for for sure for sure um i think if anything he would want to u-turn out into the rillaboom i think that makes the most sense here but uh if the rillaboom does come in then i probably just expect the u-turn or expect the knockoff i probably teleport and i probably oh no goes back into this thing so uh i should be able to uh, I should be able to... So first of all, that U-turn damage should pretty much confirm no bulk. And that should also pretty much confirm... Uh, at 80%, yeah, foul play doesn't quite do it. Foul play doesn't quite do it. So, unfortunately, I have to let him get spikes up. Although I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I think that's I think ultimately it's gonna be fine. 
just letting him get spikes up because this will allow me to deal a decent amount of damage with foul play. Uh, he won't be able to take another one. So again, this is pretty much the same kind of status quo. I'm still only allowing a, a single layer of spikes and uh, it does get the tox off, which is unfortunate, but only still allowing up a la one layer of spikes and I still got to do a lot of damage to the Noivern. So ultimately, this is kind of still where I'd like to be, I guess. He doesn't know that I have dual scarf, which is unfortunate. My foul play is disabled, so uh, I, I don't think that that invites anything in per se. Maybe the Galarian slow king, if you really want to uh, make that argument, but I can just I can just uh, teleport out of here. I would expect to see the real boom for sure, for sure. I think. I'd expect to see the real boom. I don't want to leave myself soft to Noivern. I don't want to leave myself soft to Noivern. Let's go into the Feeny straight away. So yeah, this is a pretty clear teleport on my end, and I think I just go directly into the Celesteela. Uh, I feel like there's no other play but to just teleport the heck out uh, immediately. But I think once I kind of like get my bearings a little bit and I start to get into the rhythm of um, of after having defogged and after having set up my own rocks, I think I will be in a much stronger position. This this Feeny concerns me quite a, a decent amount. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's going, maybe it wants to taunt me, but I can't toxic it anyway, so who knows? Call, goes for Combine, that's fair. This will allow me to go into a pretty darn specially defensive Celesteela, and I will be able to, to um, get some get some heavy slams off. Let's see. And then, yeah, this this cell seal is made for this. So even if I give up the cell seal in the process, then I can always bring up bring in the, the the Victini and try to bolt strike or bring in the Zarud and try to and try to uh, power whip. Either way, I think is ultimately fine, presumably. But just to see what kind of damage we're looking at. Oh, heavy slam actually does not do a whole ton, but I think it's ultimately fine. I probably should have just clicked um, Leech Seed. I definitely should have clicked Leech Seed. I think I will on the next turn, but I, but I am a little bit disappointed that I didn't just do it right there. Let's go for the plus one surf. Let's go for the plus one surf. And yeah, there's no doubt about it. I really should have just clicked Leech Seed. Although it might be slightly better for me that, that I can Leech Seed anything if he switches. Just seeing how specially defensive I am might make him inclined to, to switch out here. And if I can Leech Seed any other Mon on the team, like the Noivern wanting to come in and click Flamethrower then that might feel strong or the Galarian Slow King wanting to click flamethrower that might also that, that, that doesn't feel as strong but it feels okay it goes for iron defense yeah that's definitely not great but i think i think leech heat and a bunch of other things can wear this thing down although it's gonna be more and more difficult it's gonna be a lot more difficult for sure um, but we're going to try to make work whatever we can make work here, right? I think um, I think this Feeny is going to struggle to do a whole ton of damage. And like I said, ideally we can just wear this thing down over time. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Heavy Slam is also just reasonably strong against most of his team. Uh, this thing doesn't really have strong recovery, which which does imply that it will get over worn down over time. But I do want to kind of take the stock of the kind of damage that I'm doing. Uh, so that was about 15-ish percent, I would guess. That looked to my eye like around 15-ish percent, uh, which does which is perfectly in line for. Yeah, this thing is probably just pretty much max special defense or max physical defense. If it is, Victini Bolt Strike isn't doing a whole ton. Zerud. Um it goes for the surf, yeah. Zerud uh is also is doing significantly more. Zerud is doing closer to half, which is a lot more encouraging, but we're just gonna let these kind of couple turns play out, and I think ultimately giving up the cell steel just to wear down the Feeny is always gonna be worth it for me. It's always gonna be worth it for me because in particular it opens up my Victini a whole ton. 
It opens up my Victini a whole, whole ton. Um, now Zerud. Zerud I really wanted here for the Landorus in particular. Uh, so that's never going to feel great. Uh, Scarf Zerud just helps me, you know, manage a number of things a lot easier. But ultimately, and ultimately, I, I honestly think he's, he's probably saying to himself, you know, as long as 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 long as he's able to to trade his Feeny for my Celestia, then he probably feels good about it too. He probably has a, a bunch of different um, things going on in his head about kind of um, the way this match will ultimately look if he can take out my Celestia. But I'm looking at the other side, thinking this Feeny just opens up a lot for me, having it being gone here. So I think. I think if I think if my Celesteela ends up taking out this this Feeny, then then my instinct says that I keep the Celesteela primarily because it always makes it kind of difficult for the Landorus to, to lock into a move. I fully expect this Landorus to be choice scarfed. And my main Mon here that makes uh, those decisions difficult for the Landers is going to be the Celesteela. So maybe that would be worth keeping around, but it's really difficult to say. Uh, it does deny my Beast Boost because I, I will KO through Leech Seed, it looks like. But I'm not terribly concerned about that for, for the moment. I don't think that Beast Boost was ever going to really uh, make the biggest... Well, actually, that Beast Boost might be the difference between me taking and not taking a Noivern Flamethrower. Regardless, here, here, I've never done this, but I'm going to see if I can make marks on this the screenshot just to, just to note what's gone down. Okay, so down to four Mons. Down to four Mons. Down to four Mons. Actually, this thing could get a really strong lead seed in, in the late game, potentially on the... On the, on the, what is that thing called? Um, on the slow king. Okay, so this is an unfortunate situation because I really want to bring this thing in and set up rocks, but at the same time I don't want to. Actually, do I? Maybe it is worth giving giving this thing up this this early on. I I know he's gonna click knock off, and that's fair. Do I do I take a hit if this thing is just straight up banded? Oh, but at this point, it, it, it probably has. Yeah, it probably just always hits me with knockoff, and it's never going to be great. Yeah, knockoff just KOs every time. Uh, because normally I would I'd bring this thing in, I would click South Rocks, and I would go on from there. But um, but. Yeah, because because this just allows my Victini to come in. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I'm 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 overthinking it. Click superpower. That's fine. And this allows my Victini to come in. Click U-turn, and ideally, my next course of action should always be to click Defog with with Rotom. Or I could click V Create. In all honesty, I could click V Create. I could click V Create. Man, that's tough. I could click V Create. Even the Noivern's weak enough where V Create should KO. Hmm. Maybe I do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Nothing wants to come in on a V Create. This is uh, an Adamant Scar V Create. And even if this thing does want to come in, yeah, it does first this choice scarf as well. But I have to imagine that that's weakened enough where. Oh, and I benefit a, a little bit from the grassy terrain as well. Ugh, okay, that's not great. The fact that I don't KO here. But um, I could bring in the duck again. Actually, no. At this point, I probably just bring in the. I just bring in this thing. Could you turn again? That would be unfortunate, but. Oh yeah, he saw that I'm scarfed. He saw that I'm scarfed. So maybe U turning is not the best play for him. He's, he does stay in. Maybe he's just yeah no. Never mind. Hmm. It's tough. 
The click's boom burst. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, I probably don't take a follow-up Draco. Oh, it's Throat Spray. Oh, that's not great. Um, I think defogging is always going to be the optimal play, even though I have a chance to, to, to just KO this thing with, with Volt Switch. Uh, defog just feels really strong here, especially if I can get rocks up on, on my own. Um, but what do I do now? Goes for another Boom Burst. I think... No, we don't take it. Nah, that's rough. That's rough. I completely misplayed. It doesn't particularly matter. I can always do this. I click Darkest Lariat. Darkest Lariat hits his entire team really well. Good going to Rillaboom, knowing that he takes a Darkest Lariat and that he can click U-turn every time. Um, but now... Now that I don't have to be worried about... Now that I don't have to be worried about... Um, whether or not I've defogged already, that means that now my... Now my Duraludon is free to... Now my Duraludon is really free to... Switch in on the Rillaboom every time. So... If I go into Rilla... If I go into Duraludon... If he goes into Rillaboom, I go into Duraludon, he turns out into... Into Landorus. And then from there, I go into the duck, I teleport, if he stays in, then I go into Zarud, question mark? Yeah, that's probably how it goes. Well, it depends on whether or not he stays in, because I have an obvious, you know, Ice Beam to hit it back with, right? So, he could switch out, but then nothing really wants to take two Darkest Layers at that point, right? Yeah, either way, I I mean, I know Landorus comes in, and I know Duck comes, comes in after that. Uh, I don't think he's revealed, oh, this thing comes in, interesting. Well, I can just Dark Pulse this. I really want to get a Dark Pulse off on this. I really want to get a Dark Pulse off on this. Not seeing the Landorus surprises me quite a bit. So, let's see. I kind of expect this thing to want to be AV. As, I mean, for the most part, these tend to be. Uh, there's Dark Pulse. Any... Okay, there's the Flamethrower. I have to imagine we take one. Yeah, yeah, okay. We should take multiple. We should take multiple. And I think, if anything, just wearing this thing down, potentially getting a crit somewhere down the line, kind of helps me. Maybe I want to click... Maybe I want to click Rocks. I mean, do Rocks really help me at this stage in the game? Do Rocks really help me at this stage in the game? Probably not. In all honesty, I think we're at the point in this game where either Victini Oko's things or or it doesn't. But uh, this is also making me really soft to the real boom. I'm um, in all honesty. But once this once this goes down, is there anything that I would want to switch in? Maybe I bring in the the Victini just hard and then click V create. Maybe I just bring it in hard and click recreate. Um, what is that downside? If I go into if I go in and click recreate, then. It at least preserves the, the Duraludon as a sack, which I'm going to need against the Rillaboom in particular. I mean, this kind of makes sense. This kind of makes sense in my head. I 
Maybe this makes sense, but I also want to take a look at Rillaboom. A banded Rillaboom. A banded Rillaboom against my Victini. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think I just click recreate every time. Because 100% this is more expendable. Which means that whatever comes in, I I sack off my Duraludon, which lets me either go into my Victini, if it's the Rillaboom, or it lets me go into... Well, no, if... Yeah. If, if, if he ends up with his Rillaboom on, on the board, I go into Victini. If he ends up with the... With the Draudon on, on board, then I go into then I go into Porygon, and that's kind of how we end this match, I think. Because then we're at the point where where Rillaboom does not want to switch into a an Ice Beam from Porygon, uh, especially with me being an analytic, because it kind of shores up my my Zerud. It gives my Zerud the amount of damage that it needs to potentially clean the matchup with Darkest Lariat. So I think that's kind of where we go from here. Potentially. It's really still tough. It's a really tough endgame, and it has to be played out incredibly well. Yeah, Landorus comes in here. I don't think he just hesitates to click Earth Power here. The Duck comes in. I click Ice Beam. I either claim a KO on, on the Landorus, or I... Or I um, get a lot of damage onto the Rillaboom. And hopefully we can make it out of this match. This is a really tough endgame, though. A super duper tough endgame. Because either of his last two mons can easily, could easily win this for him. If I make even, you know, one bad turn. Or if he just makes a really great turn somewhere that I can't manage. But I still think it goes for an earthquake. Okay, so that's tough on my Porygon because my Porygon is 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 um especially defensive. That could actually be the difference in the match. Actually, because of Zerud. If it's a physical Landorus, I'm going to take a second here. Yeah, a physical Landorus against Zerud should not be able to pull this off. A physical Landorus against Zerud should not be able to pull this off. Although, yeah, Darkest Larry doesn't seem to... It seems to be a roll to do a KO, which is not good, like even a little bit. But at this point, if he decides to stay in, then I, then I think I have the resources to be able to. I think I have the resources to be able to pull off a KO here. I should look into the Porygon, you know. Calx does switch out, which is very interesting. Let's see, Banded Rillaboom against Zerud. Yeah, two Darkest Lariats actually shouldn't quite do it. Yeah, okay. So now he clicks U-Turn. Yeah, that could have been a throw. Now he clicks U-Turn. Now he collects U turn. Okay, so I should still be able to take a hit with the duck. I think. I should still be able to take a hit with the duck. If he goes for the grassy glide, then that'd be unfortunate, but like I said, I still should be able to take a hit with the duck. Even after the U turn. Ugh, okay, now it's really not looking good. Okay. Was potentially a huge misplay. So now what happens? 
Now what happens? Well, no, because he brings in Landorus. He KOs. He KOs the duck. I go into. Oh, he probably has this. Maybe he has a sludge wave, and he maybe he's not a fully physically offensive Landorus. Maybe he's not a fully physically offensive Landorus. Maybe he has a sludge wave in the back. No, I think he would just rely on U-turn at that point. All right, well, if we can take a hit, then we can take a hit. That would be dope. And then, but if not, then, yeah, this just looks not good at all. Because then I'm forced to bring in the lander, or then I'm forced to bring in the, the, then I'm forced to bring in the, the Zarude. He can very freely U-turn. So then I probably have to U-turn myself. I click U-turn, go into Victini. He clicks U-turn, goes into Rillaboom. Then I V-create. And then I am in a better position. That's an that's a interesting play to make. So that honestly makes me believe that this thing is 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 physically offensive. Which if that's the case, then I think I just straight up take an earthquake in in the terrain with Victini and Victini potentially wins. But also if I'm still in terrain, then I have no reason to risk that and I take a then I take the opportunity to get off a rain boosted power whip oops, sorry a terrain boosted power whip this, this is just a really tough end game and I am up on time a little bit so I'm gonna try to take that advantage on time because he has to KO me right he can't just you know actually he can't lock himself in a U-turn that's a that's a that's a very interesting point he has to KO me. He can't lock himself in a U-turn. So. Yeah, I'm going to click Ice Beam here. Locks himself into Stone Edge. Okay. So if I am... I think I should always take two Stone Edges, right? Well, I should always take one Stone Edge and then be able to hit him back on the next one. So, Power Whip in Grassy Surge. Is, should I even risk the Grassy Surge? I think I have to because because Power Whip isn't quite the 2 KO that I... Or, Darkest Layer isn't quite the 2 KO that I need it to be. Where is Grassy Terrain? Here it is. Okay. Okay, Grassy Terrain isn't quite a 2 KO. So, I probably just click U-Turn, sack off the... Sack off the. Sack off the. Thing. But then. Does that make a. I probably should just go for the power whip. If I miss a power whip, then I'm pretty sunk. We're going to have to go for the power whip. We're going to have to try to land it. We do land it. Okay, that's huge. That's huge. Because now... Yeah, yeah. I never expected a KO. But now, we should always take this. And now, now just to not miss another power whip, I go into Victini. I suck off the Victini. And then bring this back in. Click Darkest Larry. And that's the end of the game. That's how we... Don't mess around with any kind of rolls or anything. We just win here. We have to give up the sack because Zrude can do this. Oh, we did. We did take one the whole time. Okay, that's 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 funny. That's fun. I did have a lot of I did have a lot of um, HP investment into this because uh, I really only scarfed myself for anything that was non scarf so uh, I actually did take from full a an earth power and I knew that so I wanted to take that I wanted to use that to, to my advantage at some point but I think I just got flustered in the game itself and um, I wasn't I didn't really want to risk it ever on 
on, you know, a Stone Edge crit or whatever the case may be. So, this is ultimately always the best w way to go. We get the Starkus layered off. We pick up the KO. That was a really, really difficult endgame. That was a very technical endgame. But, thankfully, we do get this win. We'll, mo we'll move this up to 5-3. and three. Um, It puts us in a really decent spot. We obviously have to win out. Um, this next matchup is a matchup that I've thought about for a decent amount of time, but it's always going to end up with so many different directions that, that this could go in. I really want to get that final win. I really want to kind of make things happen for the rest of the season, but this was a really strong win, and hopefully we can just go on from here and try to make other things happen and make things happen in any type of postseason. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL as well as uh, a, a draft that I'm currently finalizing now. Once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again. Out.